And something else here I'm doing, not on camera, is I'm peeling the bark off. And the reason being, since this log has been on the ground for almost three years, there's, there's a few buds in this bark and there's some insects in there. And you want to get this bark off because if you don't, while it's over here air drying, those guys will just multiply and they'll start eating your wood even more than they already have. I usually don't debark my slabs, but when they've been on the ground this long, it's a good idea. And if I wasn't filming this, it would peel right off. But since the camera's going, it's going to be a pain. I have to get my draw knife out. But you guys get the picture. We got an interesting log on here today. This is another Crete Bank Black Walnut. It came uh, from the same place that other one came from, from the last video. If you've not seen that video, there's a link down below to that one. But uh, this log has been on the ground for almost three years. This log is going to give us some problems, I think. I'll bring the camera in just a second and show you guys the end of it. And uh, it's going to be kind of aggravating. A big crack running the whole way through it. Uh, we'll get through it though and get what we can out of it and uh, there's no crotch in this that I could see but there should be some really nice uh, grain color in this walnut not much sapwood on it either looks pretty good real quick here before we get started I'm gonna try to saw this at nine quarter for slabs and I may have to make one or two mantles out of the bottom of it because of the crack I'm not sure what it's gonna look like when I open it up be a lot of troubleshooting today on this and we're also using the number four degree double hard wood miser blade. That's the blade we started with on that last video and I got about three cuts out of it. It's still on the mill, so we'll be using that today. As you can see, this log is a disaster. I remember this log when I bought it from the farmer. I bought two trailer loads, I think, of walnuts off him. And I remember seeing this crack in it and it has gotten worse over time. I probably should have sawed it within a few weeks of uh, buying them from the job, but I didn't. It's too late for that now. But as you can see, this is the small end, which is facing me here at the mill. And the diameter is around 20 inches. And this is an eight and a half foot log. So a good size walnut log, 20 inches, eight and a half feet. You know, that's a, that's a premium walnut log. It's hard to get them, you know, this size anymore. They're just, there's not, not many of them left. But we got our crack coming right down through here. And there's also one on the radial plane coming right down there. And we got our pith is off-centered. So there's a lot going on here. I mean, you got your pith that's off-centered. You got a crack here, a crack here, one starting up here. I, I think this one right here may not go in too far. But uh, judging by the other end, these two right here go the full length. That's what's going on here in the small end. But I'm going to base all my cuts off of the large end of the log because that's where my width is going to be. And I'm, hopefully I'll have more success by doing that. All right, guys, so here's the large end. It's about 23 inches diameter, you know, a heck of a good size for a walnut tree. And it's got similar characteristics to that small end. The pith is offset here on the same side. It's got that large crack running through the middle of it. It's got a radial crack right below it. But on this one, there's no crack above it, whereas the small end, you have a small one on the top. So I don't think that crack's gonna run the whole way. So my strategy is gonna be, I'm gonna come up here on the top and take one cut off the top and just barely skim this bark off to where I can see the face of this log and kind of see if that crack on the other end goes in any deeper than it looks like. I hope it doesn't. 
Now if we're okay, I'll start coming down and do nine quarter slabs. What we'll do after every slab, we'll cut the sawmill off and take it off and examine it and make sure we're in good shape. But we should get four slabs out of this section. Probably not five, probably about four of them. And judging by the grain here, it's got a little bit of a swirl going on. There may be some curly walnut figure in here. I'm not sure if there's one to be or not, but judging by this swirl of the grain, should be some nice slabs come out of this, and they're going to be at their widest point around maybe 22 inches on width, maybe 21 or 22. That's pretty good. And if any of you guys think of a different way I should be doing this, let me know in the comments below. I've not sawed up a lot of logs with cracks this bad in them before. I, you know, I, I can think of a few, but none with a crack all the way down going two different directions. So this is probably the worst log I've ever sawed up as far as crats go. So any guys with any experience with this, you know, let me know in the comments below what you might do different. Because another thing I thought about doing was is just quarter the whole log out and uh, quarter saw, you know, five quarter boards on it. But I really hate to lose these wide slabs at the top. That's where the money is in this game right now. You know, on the market right now, people love these live edge slabs. They like them thick and that pays really well pays twice what one inch boards will bring right now. All right guys, I'm gonna quit talking and uh, let's get the saw. First slab, let's see how we did. It looks okay. I inspected the top of it when we took off that first cut and there was no cracks and that crack in the small end that we saw on the top did not go in very far at all, if any. So it should be in pretty good shape. Let's see what kind of uh, character we got hiding in this thing. Here's the outside of the first slab. Let's see how we look. Got that green color in there, guys. And got some really nice colors here on the outside. That's... Let's saw up another one.
not bad here on the second slab. Got some real nice colors down here toward the bottom of the log and the large end. Got some purple and some chocolate colors going on in here. And this green will turn one of these colors as well once this log sits out here for about 30 or 40 minutes. But I, I'm just happy that there's not a crack running in the middle of it. You know, I got a knot on the other end that goes almost all the way through, but some epoxy will take care of that whenever somebody goes to make a table out of this or whatever it becomes one day. But I'm just happy we've got no cracks, man. That's pretty good. This is slab number two that we've pulled off and uh, we've avoided that crack so far. And our width down here is about 18 inches here at the very bottom. So this is a nice slab and there's some nice figure right in here. I'll bring the camera in and show you guys. Some nice figure right here. That's where the grain is kind of not too straight. And that's on the end grain where I was pulling out where it kind of had a little bit of a curl to it. And just some really nice colors. I'm really anxious to see what this slab's gonna look like in about 45 minutes. No crotch wood in this log, which is my favorite, but this is still a really nice slab. Very minimal sap wood here on the ends, which tells you that it was in a really dense location, had to fight for nutrients. Had a lot of trees around on that creek bank. So uh, that makes for really, really uh, narrow sap lines when you have a situation like this. It's good stuff, you know. Any day you're sawing walnuts, a good day. I thought I was gonna have a bad day though. That crack had me scared this morning, but I think we're going to be in good shape. <laughs>